Hi guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and all things creative. I'm Jacqueline and I'm an interior architect and designer here at DMB. And in today's video, I'll be diving into the question, what is an interior architect? And I'll also be discussing the differences between interior design, interior decoration and interior architecture. I hope that this video helps people who are deciding which profession to go into or for anyone who's just interested in finding out the difference between the three areas. That being said, let's jump into the video. First off, I want to talk about the common misconceptions surrounding the job title interior designer. I cannot tell you how many times family, friends and other people have asked me what exactly it is I do in my job. I tell them I'm an interior architect and they say, oh, okay, so like picking out furniture and choosing paint colours. Or they just nod along but secretly have no idea what the difference is between interior design and interior architecture. And I think that the interior design profession has been given such a bad rap because of certain TV shows. You know, you'll often see an interior designer picking out furniture, paint samples and also doing the renovation themselves, strangely. It's also not helpful because on these shows the judges and the contestants call themselves interior designers when in reality they're interior decorators. It's really confusing, I know. So just to be clear, these types of projects on these shows are interior decoration projects, not interior design or interior architecture. So let me clear up the differences between them now. Okay, so the main thing that all of these professions do is of course to provide a design for an indoor space for a particular client. Interior design itself covers all types of sectors, such as healthcare, hospitality, workplace, retail, residential, exhibition spaces, and many others, all of which have different requirements and design approaches to their spaces. The main objective, of course, is to provide a design solution for a client's problem. So interior decorators are what you'd probably associate with that stereotype of an interior designer. Interior decorators are responsible for liaising with the client, producing an FF&E pack, which is furniture, fixtures and equipment, creating mood boards, choosing colour palettes, selecting artwork and producing basic furniture arrangements. Usually these types of people would be hired for a residential project because their main skills are focused around soft furnishings. It's also worth noting that technically anyone can call themselves an interior decorator. You don't need an accreditation or qualification necessarily to become one. At the most, you could do a one to two year course or certification. Whereas with interior design, you need a degree to call yourself an interior designer. This is because within that qualification, you'll be learning more so that you can produce larger scale projects that require a higher skill level. Interior design is actually the art and science of understanding people's behavior in order to create a functional space within a building. Interior designers apply creative and technical solutions within a structure that are functional, beautiful and also beneficial to a user's quality of life and culture. The best way to explain the difference is that interior designers will do all of what entails interior decorating plus more complex things such as doing general arrangements, construction drawings, sections and elevations, reflected ceiling plans, electrical plans, material finishing plans, 3D visualizations and bespoke designs as well. Within interior design, there's also lots of emphasis on designing and complying with building regulations and code. Uh, also fire safety, heating, ventilation and air conditioning, disabled access, noise pollution, emergency exit plans, all the stuff that you don't necessarily see, we have to sort out as well. This is of course to make sure that we're designing spaces that are not only functional, but also safe for people to use and inhabit. And of course with offices, restaurants, hospitals, hotels, shops and so on, they all have their own specific regulations that we need to adhere to. Just as an example, a restaurant bathroom's door swing needs to be able to leave a space to manoeuvre in that's 450 millimetres in diameter. Now of course that's just one example out of thousands but you get the idea. Have you ever seen a bathroom where the cubicle door hits the toilet? Because I have unfortunately. These types of things have not followed building regulations or building standards and are actually therefore illegal and you could be liable for the errors or the restaurant may have to close down as it's deemed as being unsafe. In industry, interior designers are usually chosen for anything commercial such as food and beverage projects, office spaces, 
hospitality, marine projects, refurbs, residential projects, exhibitions, you know, those kinds of things, with the construction industry accounting for 40% of climate change. As designers, we also need to take into consideration the sustainable aspects of a project. In our own design studio, for example, we implement a 40% usage of sustainable materials on all projects. And hopefully, you know, as time goes on, that will be 100%. It's really important that all of the designs we create are not only sustainable, but provide solutions for the future. Now, interior architecture is that profession where no one's really quite clear on what it is. And just like I said before, interior architects carry out all the tasks that an interior decorator and an interior designer would do, plus some more additional things such as programming and zoning, circulation diagrams, in-depth project and construction management, structural and technical aspects, site meetings, and putting through planning applications. They also take into consideration things that an architect would take into consideration when designing a project, like the use of light, site and location influences, architectural philosophies, how the design will be built, urban design, geography, styles and cultural aspects as well. Usually you'll find that interior architects work in bigger architectural firms, those like OMA or Bjark Ingels Group because they are needed to work alongside architects on large-scale projects in order to produce an all-round beautiful build. Could you imagine a gorgeously sculpted building shell with a horrible plain interior? It just wouldn't work. And that's why interior design and architecture work symbiotically, you just can't have one without the other. I also think that what sets interior decoration, interior design and interior architecture apart is the level of software knowledge. It all depends on your type of training of course, but usually you'll find that decorators use simpler programs or even just hand sketches, whereas interior architects are on the other side of the spectrum and use more advanced programs like BIM. For example. And just like interior design, you need a qualification in order to call yourself an interior architect, although you don't need to study four years like an architecture student would do. It's important to state though that although we can do structural work, we cannot change anything that's load bearing, but which is fine because in that case, we would then be assisted by an architect or a structural engineer to complete that specific part of a project. So you might be thinking, well, why not just become an architect instead? And although I love architecture and the process of creating buildings, I do love interior design more. I like the fact that how we design a space ultimately influences how others use the space and how an atmosphere can impact the way we feel within a space and how it can also impact our experience within that space. I think that a lot of the time as consumers and users of a space, you don't often see the thinking and analysis that's gone into the spatial planning and design of that room and yet that's what's influencing our spending habits and the experiences we have there. And personally, the reason why I wanted to become an interior architect and not just an architect is one, because architectural projects tend to last a couple years, if not, you know, 10 years or even more, whereas interior projects are a lot shorter time periods. So it gives me that chance to be creative on more projects more frequently. And two, because I genuinely like the soft furnishing side as well and, you know, drawing CAD plans and creating visualisations and mood boards. I like a mixture of all those types of things. So yeah, interior architecture allows me to be creative in all these different parts, which is why I think it's such a great career path to follow if you are interested in interior design. If you're new, then welcome. This channel is all about interior design, architecture, illustration, content creation and graphics. So if any of that interests you, make sure to subscribe to see videos just like this one. And if you like this video then please give it a big thumbs up because by doing that you really do support our channel. I hope that I answered the question what is an interior architect and also cleared up the differences between the different professions. Or if you learned something new then comment below what intrigued you the most. Okay guys thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!